<laughs> Hi, I'm Alyssa, and I'm a senior at Bennington High School. <laughs> and this is my poem, You. <clears throat> when I close my eyes, I can still see that two-bedroom apartment. The small door to that dreadfully narrow kitchen and the lava lamp illuminating Mickey's room. I see the couch pressed up against the far wall and still remember looking down at my feet, thinking how uncomfortable it was to wear feety pajamas and tennis shoes. I hear the constant yelling and feel the ever-present frustration as you sat me on your knee and told me this was it. And although you lacked the common characteristics of a father, I still cried and said, Daddy, please don't go. Fourteen years have passed, but I still wonder if I ever cross your mind. Some nights I wish I could see you just one more time, not to tell you I miss you or look for sorrow in your eyes, but to look at your withered face and say how much I've grown to despise you. You left your little princess at three years old without even putting up a fight just handed me back realizing I no longer worked as a key to a woman who had shut you out and changed the locks on her doors. Well, I'm sorry I wasn't a strong enough chain to bind you both together in your plan for happily ever after, but what did you expect out of a three-year-old matchmaker? I was the age of magical creatures and Barbie, and all I knew at the time was daddy didn't want me. And the more I grew older and the less things changed, the more I craved acceptance and just wanted to be wanted. And now I can't help but think that maybe if I'd known the gentle touch of a man or anything other than his ferocious roar, I would somehow better understand that contrary to what they said, my 12-year-old self was not responsible for the places he put his hands. See, because of the fact that I froze and couldn't find the voice to say no, I became subject to the words slut and hoe. I was exposed to the tragedies and the weights of the world too early, and you were supposed to be there to let me know the person at fault was him, not me. But now I have a new dad, and people call me Schultz, and as sad as it sounds, I still hold the hopes that the third name will stay until maybe someday I find a guy that won't make me want to let go. Because the one who took me in and once served as a hero still fills up his lungs and yells each word from the back of his throat. And I try to get him to hear me. I beg and I plead, but the only thing I hear is don't talk while I speak. And now I stand here in front of these people today hoping somehow, somehow you'll hear me when I say, you are the one that I blame for the hurt for the fear of losing the ones I hold dear, for insecurities and desperation, for trying to find salvation in anyone who looked my way. And now if there's one thing I want you to know, it's that my future is worth more than anything you will ever hold. And the strength I have gained will carry me on as opportunities unfold while you sit at home with nothing.